Do you find it difficult getting across the Gold Star Bridge? What if you had to take a ferry? Stay tuned as we talk with Jim Streeter, our town historian, on this week's edition of Welcome to Groton. Welcome to Groton. I'm your host, Carol Pratt, and with me today is Jim Streeter, our town historian. Jim, thanks for coming on. It's always a pleasure to have you on the program. I think you know more about Groton than anyone in the no, town. No, I'll disagree with <laughs> you with that. My yeah. mentor, Carol Kimball, had more information yes. in her little finger than I have in my but entire she, body. She passed it all on to you, I well, think. Well, a considerable <laughs> amount of it, yes. How did you become interested in local history? Was it through talking with Carol Kimball? No, I think uh, it was years ago when I was on the uh, police department. I, mm -hmm. I used to you know, kind of communicate with all the, all the citizens. And you, when you started talking to the older folks, they started relaying information about what was here and what was there. And mm -hmm. it just intrigued me. So uh, I, I developed a keen interest in it and been going ever since. Oh, wow. Now, how did people get across the Thames River? <laughs> Well, that's a that's a very lengthy story, and <laughs> and uh, actually, I started uh, doing a presentation for uh, uh, documenting the bridges yes. that go across the Thames, and and when I started that, I learned you can't talk about those bridges before you start talking about ferry boats and canoes and things like that. So uh, that's how it started. Uh, if you go way back, uh, well, John Winthrop. Mm -hmm. Came from England and, and actually founded our uh, plantation. They, they call it the Pequot plant, mm -hmm. plantation, and it went from Niantic to Pawgatuck. Oh, wow. Uh, and you notice I said Pequot plantation. Yeah. I didn't hear of New London. Actually, it was called Namioc. Oh, okay. That was the name of New London. And the river was not called Thames River, it was called the Great River. The Great River. The Great River. I've never heard that. Yep. And, uh, the inhabitants, uh, they, they petitioned the common court from England to, uh, to call uh, uh, New London, London. Mm -hmm. The court said, no, we, we don't care for that name. <laughs> uh, we'd like to have it called Fair Harbor. Fair Harbor. So, oh, okay. Uh, Which accounts for a lot yeah, of the names you hear you're in right. London, Fair Harbor Place and you, things like that, yeah. Uh, the inhabitants didn't like that. So about five years later, uh, they did a... Uh, a compromise, and they called it New London. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, when the inhabitants were here, they also crossed borders from New London to Groton. Okay. Now, Groton was called East London. Oh. All right. Uh, or the Common Court wanted them to call it East London. Yeah. And yeah. we rejected that, and ultimately <laughs> it was called Groton, thank goodness, which was the home of John Withrop. Wow. Over in England. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we started, uh, the settlers started raising crops and having their, their cows and, and pigs on the Groton side. Mm -hmm. So they needed transportation back and forth. And at first they would start with the canoes. Oh, uh, wow. Remember, we're talking 1650s. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're talking very primitive canoes. They're called dugout canoes. Okay. And they would put a cow in a dugout? Uh, they had some large dugout. Wow. Uh, and these dugout canoes were actually large logs that they would hollow out and burn out and, and use oh. that. Uh, so ultimately, the traffic became so intense that mm -hmm. people wanted to go back and forth to their, their properties uh, that they, they petitioned uh, John Winthrop and the, the uh, I guess you called their the court Mm -hmm. of, of John Withrop, right. uh, like our town council, right. and said, we need, we need to have transportation. We need somebody to do this full time. Uh, so one of the second groups of settlers that came in, say around uh, 1655, uh, Edward Messenger, was appointed to be uh, the ferryman. Oh. And he received actually a 20-year lease. And he could charge for it. Uh, and then he also was pr uh, granted permission to 
to take his cows over to Groton to keep his calves over there. But the ferry service at that point was just canoes and just dugouts canoes. or scows yep. or whatever nope. they called them? Uh, so the canoes and, and Messenger would, made a promise that he would, he would put on a scow, a flat bottom wide boat, uh -huh. uh, within a year or so. Uh -huh. uh, well, unfortunately, Mr. Uh, Messenger uh, only kept it for two years and then he moved to Windsor. Maybe that's why we don't see anything named Messenger in the yeah, town. Probably. <laughs> you probably. know how everybody has a, a, there's a reason for the street names and stuff, but I don't think we have anything named Messenger. No, we don't. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> so uh, they must have been angry about that. Uh, well, <laughs> Mr. Winthrop was, yeah. because it fell back into his hands, because sure. he was the leader of the, of the settlement. Yeah. Uh, so within a few years, uh, well, I would say a year later after Messenger left, he gave a 50-year lease to carry Latham. Now, that's a familiar name oh, for yes, everybody. Yeah. Uh, the same Latham as the Latham House? Uh, are they're related? all related yeah. in, in some ways. Yeah. Uh, the 50-year lease was interesting because uh, they actually, uh, uh, he actually indicated that uh, he would put on, not only, he would start with a canoe, mm. but then he also would put on a flat bottom boat. Now there were existing boats that he was using then, so he didn't, or did he? He probably. Uh, I had think to build he, more. he, you know, and it's all conjecture because yeah. the information relating to the ferries back in 1650s yeah, uh, is, is, is scarce, price. very yeah. scarce. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the lease required that he would move to the east side, which is Groton side. Right. New London provided property, and that he would have to build a house, so he could keep the ferry there and keep the ferry up kept. Mm -hmm. uh, he. Uh, he did this, uh, part of the lease also said that for the passengers of his ferry, he was permitted to provide them with liquor and wine as oh, refreshments. To get more passengers. Uh, well, I think it, I, probably <laughs> for purposes, to, because the passenger probably scared heck. Oh, that's and, true. They needed calm a reason down. to, to yeah. calm down. Uh, <laughs> he did start with a, a, a good canoe and a dugout type. Mm -hmm. And, and do uh, we know where that landing was located? Yes, it's right across the street from the Avery Cop House. Okay. And we have some uh, photographs of the, uh, the the Latham House, which yeah. ultimately became the tavern. Oh. Okay, the Ferry Tavern. Oh, uh, there was a Ferry Tavern in the other side. Yeah, of there was the, way out yeah, East Line. Way I think out, it was. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I'll be darned. And uh, that's that stayed for years. I remember that growing up. Mm. And I'm, I'm a little older, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it was torn down probably in the uh, 60s or 70s. Really? So that house was one of the older houses we had. And because of his moving there, he's almost considered one of the first settlers for the Groton Bank wow. in Groton. Wow. Uh, now, an interesting part, because of the lease, he, he wanted some money. Yeah. Uh, so he was uh, permitted to charge three pence for a passenger, three pence for a person, uh, six okay. pence for a horse, <laughs> and three pence for every calf or swine or, or pig. Now, did that include your booze on the way? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> or oh, they probably got the tavern business that way. But yeah. what was interesting, Isn't that funny? and I try to relate, uh, you and I did a presentation on Morton Plant once, and we yeah. wanted to know what was the relative uh, cost factor in yeah. today's money. Yeah. My wife and I searched for two days. We can't figure out what a pence was worth. Oh, wow. So, in yeah. 1651. So if anybody in the audience <laughs> yeah. knows, please let us know so, so we'll know what that I'll was. Darn. I assumed it was three cents, yeah. but see. Yeah. Now, the other provision that was in his lease required that no English or Indians were permitted to operate slash charge, operate and charge, uh -huh. another ferry in the area oh. if, if they did. Mr. Latham could turn around and charge those people. The so fee. he had a monopoly. Oh, absolutely, and wow. it is it is written in the grant or in the lease that he uh -huh. would have a monopoly. Wow. That. wow! So that's where we started with that, and uh, oh. uh, so that that was the beginning ferries. Now, what when did the uh, steamboat? What I'm you know you're used to seeing um, or reading about steamboat ferries. When did those start? Th those up? came th those came much later. Okay. Uh, Again, we had various scows, and the scows yeah. are a, a flat bottom wooden boat, uh -huh. and you could row them or uh, scull them. Wow. Right? And then be between the scows 
uh -huh. and the steamboats. Uh -huh. We had horse ferries. Horse ferries. <laughs> horse ferries. The horse ferries, what they did, they, they placed them on either side of the boat, and there was usually teams of two on each side or teams of three on each side. And below on them, a platform on, on a platform, side of it. and below them, and they, they would, uh, they would, their knees would be about level with the top deck. Mm -hmm. But below that was a treadmill, and the treadmill, they would move the treadmill, and the treadmill had a reduction gear on it or oh a gear on it God. that would turn a paddle underneath the thing. Uh, while doing this research, uh, uh, it, it seems cruel and sounds cruel, but the information is that most of the horses were blind. And they really? did that on purpose because they did, uh, you know, the water's rocking and no, noise on the boats. Uh, and if they became upset, then they would re rear up and, and they'd have a lot of problems. Now, you're saying they're blind. Did they put blinders on them or? <clears throat> no, they were blind. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, dear. So yeah. the ASPA yeah. would certainly be yeah. upset right. with right. that. I, oh, I wow. think I would, too. And I think your idea yeah. of putting blinders on them would have yeah, been better. Yeah, it would have been better, yeah. Yep. But they didn't want them to, so, yeah. And that operated for, uh, for quite a while. Um, I believe it operated like that until 1729. Oh. Uh, now, did they Actually, the horse boat took over in 1721. I'm sorry. It okay. took over and they charged for that probably uh, more now because they've got horses. You know, I, there was nothing in, nothing the, in, that. in the information that wow. I could find where they charged for it, but I'm sure they did. Now, where did they, the, the horses, did, where did they keep them in between mm. running the ferries, you know? Did they have like uh, stores? My understanding uh, that and it, in the writings, they say across the way from the tavern, there was a horse shed. And I'm, I'm thinking of the Avery Cop House yeah. as their carriage shed. Uh -huh. uh, I'm thinking about in that area on the Groton side and then in the, in the London side. The, actually, the ferry slip on the London side started out toward where the railroad bridge is now oh, yeah. on that side, Winthrop's Neck, I think they called it. Wow. Uh, and there was a facility over there for storing yeah. horses. This is fascinating, but we've got to take a break. Please stay tuned because we've got a lot of more information on the ferries. This is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Click it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. I want you to just the She's gonna love me all over again. That's it. Jamaica, here you come. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work's going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Are we ready? Action team. Action. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Welcome back. We're talking with our town historian, Jim Streeter. So, Jim, these um, horse ferries, as you call them, how big were they? I mean, could they take a lot of people or a lot of equipment? Or? Well, I, I did read one article that indicated that they were large enough where they could fit four stagecoaches, and each stagecoach would have four horses. So that's pretty large. That's oh, a yeah. pretty large facility. Holy cow. And you said in your notes you found how much they charged. <clears throat> Interestingly, and I did, uh, it was four cents for each person. <laughs> it was for a horse and wagon, 20 cents. And if you were to bring a cord of wood, uh -huh. which you would have to have a wagon for that, right. it was 50 cents. But it didn't make a difference if you had one or two or three, uh, what they call yokes, uh -huh. and yokes being oxen, right. which would be uh, 
pulling the, the wagon. So they, they, they made a, a few dollars. Now, I'm picturing these people on this ferry with the horses and the oxen and all that, and I'm thinking, what if all of a sudden, like, this thunderstorm came or whatever? Did they have any protection from the elements? Yes, some, some of the ferries, most of the ferries, had a small enclosure uh, for women. Only for uh, women? For women, for women passengers. <laughs> Other than that, wow. you weathered the storm. And no one worried about <laughs> handicapped access back then or anything uh, like no. that? No, no, and there are some stories where uh, the roads leading to them and it were rickety, and uh, oftentimes horses would trip and fall and fall over, and the wagon would be up, and it would cause all sorts of heck, and they'd have to bring the horse up, and uh, oh my so, goodness. You know, it wasn't the oh. greatest uh, situation. Oh, I can't imagine. So we had these horse ferries, and then what started the steam ferries? Did they hear about them from down well, south? The horse or? ferries, again, they, they weren't yeah. reliable, and, and they were kind of cruel. Mm. Uh, so uh, in 1835, uh, another person had been granted the lease, and he said he would bring in a, a ferry boat. So he did. Uh, I, I don't know the name of it, um, but <laughs> they tried it for a while, and it was too big. Too big. And too expensive. Oh. Too big for the landings. And he oh. had to charge a considerable fee because of the coal and things that they needed, the coal and wood that they needed to keep the uh, steam engines going. So they discontinued it within a year. Oh. And you would have thought that, well, let's keep going and bring yeah, in another yeah, ferry boat. Yeah. Uh, but they waited a, a, another 10 years. They went back to the horse boat. They just didn't get a smaller one. They went back to the horses. They went to the, back, back wow. to the other one. Uh, so it was about 10 years later that they did start with the, the actual steam ferries that yeah. were capable of, of landing and bringing back and forth. Did, and did they use the same landings once they went to steam? Did they use the same landing areas that they did for the horses, or did they build new ones? Yes, or? well, they, they upgraded them. Okay. You'll find where they uh, made improvements to their yeah. things. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, at that point, the New London Ferry had moved to uh, where the parade is, where the train station is. That's what they call oh, the parade okay. in New okay. London. Uh, that their their uh, uh, ferry boat landing moved to that area. And the Groton one was still it by was the still Avery Cop? By Avery Cop. In fact, uh, interesting, if you ride down Thames Street where Avery Cop is, uh -huh. you will see on the sidewalk, Ferry Spring, there's a water fountain there. Oh, well, And that's where the, uh, the, the horses, you know, with the stagecoaches, they would stop there to, uh, you know, have water, refresh right. themselves. And that spring is still there. It's cemented now. It's a oh more formal God. fountain, but uh, uh, it's still there. So, wow. Now, was, there's a mention in my notes about School Street. Was there a landing at School Street? Yeah. Uh, and this is what really impacted me. All my life, I thought the ferry slip was at School Street. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, in doing the research, we find it was up the road across the street from A.V. Cop. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some tentative dates uh, when they moved. Oh, it started yeah. at that ferry landing. Oh, okay. All right. The Kerry Latham landing, we'll call right, it for, right. for lack of a From 1655 mm -hmm. to 1794. Okay. Then from 1794 to 1886, and this shocked me. Mm -hmm. All right. They were at the end of Pleasant Street. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, which interests me because I live on Pleasant Street. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were behind, there was a series of buildings. There was the Groton Grange. My father ran a store in their fish and tackle store. Uh -huh. And there was Morgan and White's that we know of Morgan and White's. Right. It was called Cohen Bailey. It was in the back of there. Wow. Uh, Until uh, uh, 1886. Holy cow. And then it moved to School Street. Wow. Right. So in 1886 is when it moved to School Street and it wow. remained there until they closed. Oh, wow. Uh, but. Uh, so what you said the steamboats came, then the horses came back because yep. they didn't like them. So then they, at some point they went back to they steam. They went back to the steamboats. They got a smaller boat? There or? was a smaller boat in, in uh, I think it was like January, it was January of 1852. They brought in uh, the, the Mohegan and oh. it was only 55 feet long. By, I think it was 30 feet wide. So nowhere near the sizes no. of our Block Island but, ferries and things like that. But this. because of the increase in traffic, Mm. by traffic passengers and, and, and uh, stagecoaches and, and wagons with cords of wood yeah. <laughs> and hay. Uh, in 1872, they went to a larger boat called the Uncas, and that was a 76-foot boat. Wow. 
And by the way, that was built in Mystic. Oh. Uh, and then in 1891, they uh, went to the Colonel Ledger, was the name of the uh -huh. airboat, rightfully so. Yes, yes. Uh, and that was a 110 footer. Wow. And uh, that was built at the Robert, pa uh, Robert Palmer uh, boatyard in Noank. In Noank? In Noank. All local. And the last one that I can see that was made uh, was in 1905, uh -huh. and it was the Governor Winthrop. Uh. And that was 134 feet long. Wow. And that was also built by Robert Palmer's boatyard in Noank. Wow. Uh, I have some other photos that are in there where some other ferry boats would get. It's like uh, Essex had ferry boats, and mm -hmm. uh, so they would exchange. If one was broken down, they would explain. You know, because I was trying to figure out. I've got all these boats listed, but I see yeah. some names of some other boats. And there must aware. have been because that ferry tavern restaurant that we spoke of that's over by Old Saybrook, Essex, there must have been well, ferries I'm, there, too. I'm sure they stopped yeah. in for some good spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's something. Oh, wow. So th those ferries actually uh, operated in, uh, until the, the ferry system closed down. And uh, Now, people have to understand, there was no bridge during was, all this time between uh, New London and Groton. There, there was, was not. no bridge. There was not. And an interesting thing is, uh, and I think you asked me before the show, well, how did the ferries or, or the uh, railroads get back yeah, and forth? Yeah. And that was an important, that was a very, very important thing for, for our commerce uh, were the uh, railroad ferries. Uh, we had to get the ferries from New London to Groton and Groton to New London. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the railroad cars went on a ferry? The or? railroad cars went on a ferry. They would have the engines on either side to pull them off the ferries. Wow. And that started in 1858. Uh, and the New London uh, Railroad Ferry was at the parade at the, uh -huh. where the train station is now. Right. And Groton's was down toward EB at Electric Boat. It was oh. an electric boat then, right. where the road splits. And the fir at first, uh, there was a, a, a small ferry, and it could hold probably three cars, huh. it, with passengers also. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, I think that, that, that boat was called the uh, Shoreline. Uh, oh. They just got the name Shoreline. Yeah. Uh, and then ultimately they built some larger ones. And one was called the Groton. And that could hold eight cars, eight wow. railroad cars. So wow. it was quite a system. And now we'll go right back to what you started. We, we didn't have a bridge. Right. Uh, we built our first bridge across the river, railroad bridge, because of the amount of train right. traffic we right. had in 1889. So first there was a railroad bridge, not a... Traffic, That's correct. There were no cars. So. Yeah. But in 1889, uh, when they built the uh, the first bridge, uh -huh. which was a railroad bridge, the railroad ferries discontinued. This might be a dumb question, but because that was the only bridge, could farmers or anyone take their horses and use that bridge? You know, if a train wasn't coming or something. No, no? because no. of the construction, because of the width of the the, uh, the rails and, oh, things okay. like and the oh. wagon wheels and yeah. things like this. Yeah. Ultimately, in uh, uh, I think it was. Uh, 1919, uh, we built a, uh, a second bridge <clears throat> because the first railroad bridge, and we'll talk about that when I do yeah. that presentation on right. the bridges. Right. Uh, <clears throat> the train locomotives became so heavy that the bridge started to sink. Oh dear. So they built a new railroad bridge. And when they did that, the railroad turned the first railroad bridge over to the state of Connecticut who converted it into a vehicle bridge. Uh, so that's when ultimately the ferries pretty much stopped? Uh, pretty much because uh, they ultimately, with that vehicle bridge, they also put trolley tracks on it uh, and they had a walkway on it. So uh, most of the people would, uh, would utilize yeah, that. Yeah, because I'm sure prices were going up too. So yes, they, they were. So they said, we'll just walk. How far is it, do you know, from the, the shore to, to, yeah, New the, London, that's from the bank the, to New London? That's why they, when they first opened up the, 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 the ferry, they had, remember I said, near the, the London side was right. near where the railroad bridge is, and of course the ferry tavern is near where the thing. It was um, a little over a half of a mile across oh, the river. So easily traversed on foot on one of those little pathways. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so I bet you a lot of people did do that to save oh. money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you said you're going to do a presentation on just bridges. Is that, I don't know where you find the time to do this, but that's uh, terrific for that's us. A, that's the fun of, uh, yeah. of, of history. And that's going to be the bridges all throughout Groton? All throughout, because, uh, well, the Thames River Bridges, uh, quite a history there. 
and when you go into the construction of them. And, uh, mm. uh, was that the only bridge that was there? Was there ever one down by the sub base or any of those? There was one up in Norwich. Oh, see uh, yeah, that? There was yeah. one up in Norwich. Yeah. Still is one up there. It wow. crosses at a, at a uh, narrow part. Wow. How often, I didn't ask you this, how often did these ferries run? Was it like constant service? Well, at first it was more of a convenience. If you, if you needed one, you would uh, make arrangements and you would go over. We're talking like in the 1650s and oh, yeah, 1670s. Yeah, yeah. All right. But uh, when the steamboat ferries were running, uh, they would run uh, two or three trips an hour. Oh, wow. Well, depending. I mean, those horses were unreliable. Right. Things like this. Uh, yeah. And the hours were, were quite interesting because on uh, weekdays, they ran from 7.30 in the morning to 11.30 at night. Wow. On Sundays, they had a reprieve. They, they ran from, uh, uh, I think it was 9.30 to 10.30 oh, wow. at night. Jim, this has been fascinating. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming on the program. I've learned okay. a lot, and I hope everybody Good. else did, too. If you'd like more information about Groton's local history, come to the Groton Public Library. Jim Struder has published four books on our local history. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join us for the next edition of Welcome to Groton. For questions and comments concerning Welcome to Groton, you can write to the town of Groton, Connecticut, Town Manager's Office, 45 Fort Hill Road, Broughton, Connecticut, 06340. Or you can call 441-6630.